Yo! What is up, everybody? Make some noise for Planet Destiny Podcast Episode 420, the latest, absolutely most hype Destiny 2 reveal post-stream amazing hype fest. I hope you're sick. Damn, son, I know where'd weird. you find this? Coming at you live from your own goddamn living room, it's the Sunday Night Planet Destiny Podcast Episode 120, and there's only one thing that we're talking about tonight. It's the thing that everyone has been waiting all week. Pokemon! Come in here and talk about... <laughs> Not and that one thing. What if they watch Mega in their bedroom, Mag- Fallout? Is that, what did you say? You said <laughs> in your living room. What if people are watching in their bedroom? What if then people you're doing are watching on the train? Get out of your bedroom. Or on the, the toilet. You what know? if people <laughs> want to watch us? The viewership rain elitism here. Mm. Wow. Everybody know has a, a, a living room to watch I'm, I'm streams in, man. Person. Bruh. Really, really alienating half our audience God, right at the seriously. start. Yep. And you ruined my fucking already terrible joke, which was the only <laughs> thing we're here to talk about this weekend, is that Mega Mag, which is now Pokemon. a confirmed trial Sherpa for <laughs> life. <laughs> I am. That's what we're talking for about. Life. Here, right? Everybody You've here committed them for life. Carry, for life. <laughs> anyone who's helped carry a virgin to the lighthouse, raise your hand because it's right here. There it is. <laughs> Story carrying yourself counts. All right. Carrying yourself <laughs> <laughs> Picking yourself up and walking. Yeah. That's Guilty. The <laughs> is there anything yeah. else that we wanted to talk about tonight? Uh, I think I'll watch it. Mayhem Clash. Dry, Dry week. Mayhem Clash. Breath the machine. We so are like. just fucking kidding. Obviously, it is D two <laughs> hype time. The train leaves the station right now. Aww. Check your watch. What? The best thing about it is that we've got you guys to just. I can just sit back and you can tell us yeah. all about how it played, how it tasted, all the excitement <laughs> live out on the uh, the field right from uh, ground zero. So. Well, I mean, there is definitely going to be talk of tasting uh, in this podcast, but I was going to say it's episode 120, probably my favorite episode because it's the one where Story and I don't have to do Jack. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All you guys, go for it. You good? Wait, you uh, weren't there? I think you were there. I saw you there. I'm pretty <laughs> um, sure I saw you. You were definitely there, right? <laughs> <laughs> you were there. Yeah, right, right. Weren't you yeah. like the skinny white guy? Oh, no, it's true Vanguard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, never mind. Fallout, that was a mirror. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's only TV. Man. That was TV. So, so what do you yeah, want to know? What, what do you yeah, want to talk about? What's the question? Hit us up. Start. Yeah, hit, hit, you hit us with questions. Like, is, is that what we get to do, Story? Do we get to just ask them questions? Because well, we think, weren't... Why, why not? Why? Yeah. Special guests. I like it. Fallout, Mega, and Bones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Things out. Uh, I think we so, can all but, agree that we're not buying the game right and it was like the worst thing we've ever played is that what we also <laughs> want yeah well, no, definitely not true. purchasing computer parts <laughs> anytime <laughs> so definitely all right so i'm not. just gonna i'm gonna jump into it so aside from all the floofy stuff of like oh whoa the red carpet and we all walked in together and blah blah yeah so they're huge huge venue gigantic like an like an air hangar for mm-hmm. military planes we go in we go all the way down near the front pick out seats, and then we have to kind of kill time for an hour. But when that was all done, Deej kind of came on stage with like five minutes. He was like, get in your seat right now, otherwise uh, get out. <laughs> or otherwise Shut they up. delete your vaults. And I was like, <laughs> yes! <laughs> delete your vault. Don't stream this or I'll kill you. <laughs> that is actually true. Bones did say yes when he said that. He was like, do <laughs> it! <laughs> yeah. So we sat down, and they did the keynote, and I couldn't, like, I was sitting, Mega and I are sitting next to each other, and Bones is like is me, Mega, and then I think Swain from yeah. Crucible Radio, and then Bones, and then Birds, and we we're all like huddled together, and like <laughs> I couldn't think, I couldn't imagine that each minute would be more hype than the last, but it was. <laughs> and they did, they did the trailer, and we're like, oh my god, this is insane! And then like Commander Zavala does the Fist of Havoc, we're like, oh my god, oh my god, this is insane. Yeah. Oh my god. dude, <laughs> and it just kept going every time someone from Bungie came out on the stage and was like, oh, yeah, and we're, uh, we're doing this, too. Everyone was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it kept going. They really could have, like, gotten us to do any of their bidding. They had us in the palm of their hand, like, during that whole presentation. They could have, 
I don't know. I just feel like they could have put that energy towards something great. Like I felt like I was a zombie, like uh, one of Ivan Ooze's zombie adults <laughs> in that Ooze. moment. They <laughs> really sucked me in. It was amazing. I also I told Fallout at one point. I said I felt like I was in like a Southern Baptist like church when everybody's like clapping. They're really into it because like every single time they showed anything, everybody's just like ooh clapping, like screaming. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah, feeling like, the Holy Ghost of the speaker up in there. Huh? We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Pledge. Then, uh, yeah, what's up, story? Pledge. <laughs> Pledge. It's like an evangelist. Pledge or we're gonna oh, yeah. we're gonna we probably stick around water. in this story a little bit. But um when everything was said and done, they were like, Yeah, now you're gonna get to actually play the game. We're like, Oh my god. <laughs> so it's over. Everybody stands up. This is a true story. So Meg and I start looking around. And we're looking at our good friends, Crucible Radio, that we came in with. And they're all, like, talking to each other. Like, oh, wow, that was hype and blah, blah. And Mega and I are, like, looking across the room. And everyone is funneling into the <laughs> other warehouse where you can go to play the game. And I was like, Bones, Bones. <laughs> He's not turning around. And Mega's like, just go, just go. <laughs> and Mega and I just I may have, I may have said it. something worse than that, honestly. <laughs> I may have, I may have just, just like, fuck him, go. Fuck him, go, go, go. <laughs> We're like shoving, we, we just, they were gone. We were, we were way, way gone. And we went into the next room and there was a big long line and we magically made it near the front. And they were kind of, there were employees going around with clipboards and they were like, what, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And Megan and I were like, yeah, PVP, like right now. Mm -hmm. yes. And um, they put us into a PVP because they wrote our names down and they were like bringing people into these stations to play. <laughs> the first game of PvP that we played against was against Lil Sonic and Ninja with no L. So we're like, okay, of it was. good game. Good <laughs> yeah. game. Uh, yeah, we started off awesome, but um, they quickly... Quickly, quickly did, boarded us. Yeah, yeah they... Yeah. <laughs> But um, it was kind of like I was trying to figure everything out. We I wanted to like look at the skill tree and look at the guns, but the line was really really huge. And some bungee dude came over as I was looking at the skill tree, and he grabs my controller. He's like, "All right, you ready? Great!" And he starts the game. I was like, "Shit!" <laughs> I they wanted to keep the line moving, yeah, but um, naturally. yeah, we played on a map called Midtown. Midtown, yep, yes. For the new objective game called Countdown, which was a shitload of fun. And uh, I'm talking a lot. Anyone want to jump in here? Maggie? No, no, no. We're listening. We're listening. Uh, no, listening. I'm in. I'm, I'm, oh, yeah, yeah. I feel it's like I'm a... reliving it again. Oh, it's yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if you know at home the, the game type countdown, but it's mm. a objective game type where, you know, attack and defense, right? And every round it switches. If you get to six wins, then you win the game. And you spawn, and it's kind of a small to medium-sized map. And there's two areas on the map where you can activate, like, an objective. You kind of go in. It, did anyone play Halo? It was kind of like um, like, uh, like planting the bomb or something yeah, like that. You go in. Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike, Counter -strike, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's probably a better example. You just go in, and you hold whatever. You hold square, and you activate the thing. Mm -hmm. And it's now like it's powering up. Exactly. Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to blow up in, like, 30 seconds unless the defending team can come in and shut it off. And... It was actually also like trials. It was elimination. So like if mm -hmm. you died, you didn't just respawn. You're dead. You're laying there. And you can get yes. picked up like in trials, but not on a limited number of times. Mm -hmm. There were revive tokens, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Something your of that team nature. Gets, your team gets one per round. So it, say I died and Fallout died and you revived me, you fucked up basically. <laughs> like Fallout's <laughs> shut down now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you had to be really careful with how you played it and even if one team like even if you're on the defending team and you kill everybody on the attack team well great good job for you you get a bully but hey i hope you remember to turn that goddamn objective off because even mm -hmm. if you killed everybody you don't turn that bomb off you lose the round mm -hmm. and if you deactivate it then hey you win the round great job but it was crazy fun i mean we only got to play three subclasses everybody no matter mm -hmm. what you were playing you only got to play three which was Gunslinger, Striker, or the brand new Warlock, the Dawnblade, which yes. was crazy fun. Love that Dawnblade. Mm -hmm. So talk and to us a little bit about that successor. Mm -hmm. To the Sunsinger. 
I was going to oh, say, okay. so, so talk to us a little bit about that class then, because that is one of the big standouts that we got to see from the show floor there. And uh, I'm a warlock guy. I want a big flaming sword. <laughs> so tell me, what does this thing do? Yeah, it's definitely the, the spiritual successor. It is Sunsinger Reborn, pun intended, in a, uh, a class that has both, in my opinion, more offensive capabilities and uh, support capabilities, which is a really awesome thing that they added in with the class abilities. Um, Titans have some support as well. Hunters, uh, not yet, or that we don't know about, but we'll get to that. The Dawnblade was really cool. Uh, of course, everyone remembers that the first mission they show where the, the warlock floats above the enemies and you yeah. can drop down those, you just rain fire swords oh, yeah. down and everything. And it works <laughs> pretty good on the ground. I mean, if you don't want to get that hop, you just skate it across. It's like a Reinhardt fire charge blast just straight through a doorway or something like that. That works too. But um, melee and grenades, very, very similar to the Sun Singer. Uh, grenades are exactly the same, save for the fact that sticky grenades no longer one-shot kill. And um, melee they are weaker in general, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the overall time to kill has been increased, meaning it takes more time and damage to kill a guardian in the Crucible. And I don't know how much that relates in literal power output, but um, a melee, a charged, then two uncharged is required mm -hmm. to kill a full health Guardian and a sticky grenade plus a few extra shots or one good solid precision shot with a hand cannon. Uh, so that's interesting and that's it's it uh, it plays out well where these is really strategic longer engagements which is really fun and, and teamwork was definitely encouraged. Um, the special thing about subclasses now is that they have um, focuses. There's like skill trees that you select as a whole rather than picking one perk out of every column like we have now, Ooh. and that that is a very interesting thing. Um, my biggest takeaway from all of D2 is that they found ways to make things easier to balance going forward, and I think this is one of those things. So there's four perks you get. It affects your melee. It might have, like, a passive ability, and it might have something for your super. So for the one we had, it was Attunement of the Sky on the Dawnblade, which allowed us to drop out of the air if you hold circle, um, which is the same thing as your, your rift that you can drop on the floor. It had, a, it had a perk called Risen Angel, which is essentially Angel of Light. And then it had the yeah. same thing effect with your, with your super. You could stay up in the air if you aimed, which was how you saw that warlock just kind of float sideways and just go bam, bam, bam mm -hmm. with, the, with the sword. So it's like if you really, really like the drop move, you need to pick Attunement of the Sky, and you're going to get the three that come with it. If you really, really, really like the other perk down in the other skill tree that offers like a, a Twilight Garrison while you're in your super, like if that just really, really feels good to you, then you got to go with that melee and the other two or so passive perks. Um, so I think that's a, a, an interesting way to play it. And we're not going to see some crazy setup where you just pick automatically. All right, here's the five strongest perks on, on this subclass. That's mm -hmm, all I'll ever yeah. use for the rest of the game. That's, that's my only choice. Now you really do have to pick. And I'm, I'm really hoping that they put good choices in each so it's mm -hmm. appealing in, in that sense i'm sure there's going to be strong perks but yeah. that that to me stands out as a way of like okay you can't just figure out some weird setup to make defender bubbles create too many orbs so that yeah. uh, pvp games spiral and you can't have mm -hmm. tethers last the longest they can and create orbs and blah 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 you you got to really choose your setup and i think it'll make for some really interesting encounters especially if people like different yeah. skills yeah, with that, was, a, that was a big. A, just a tangent. I kind of want to go on with the builds. Do you assume or think like I think that there are more that will be unlocked as you unlock like the because there were only two builds for yeah. each subclass that we saw, and that just seems Ooh. like smaller significantly mm -hmm. than what our options are right now in yeah. Destiny One. There was another thing that I mean, obviously this is just mere speculation. Looking at the screenshots and the footage of the skill trees that I saw. And knowing how the graphics, like designers and the appearance of things look, it looked like there was space for more yes. stuff. Yes, yes. You know, like, I'm like, sorry. I'm like, <laughs> as, the, the, as soon as I saw all the, the 
the UI and everything, it was like, oh man, yeah. you know, it's the game has retained its identity, but things are different, like they're really different. And then seeing these negative spaces, I'm like, that's that's against the grain of these guys that would have something there, <laughs> even if it was just a graphic or an insignia or a symbol. Yeah. In so many little yeah. ways, we did confirm that this build is an old one. It was made specifically for this event for us to experience. Yeah. Uh, they purposely did not let us see the Arc Strider or Sentinel. Those were not ready for play. And and uh, I, I heard from, from Pope Bear and, and the guys at DCP that certain cooldowns were adjusted so that we really could experience those class abilities, which were the new, new oh, things. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. so, those, so those rifts and all the barriers that the Titans drop and the, and the evade move, uh, I believe that was sped up a little bit. And it felt noticeable because you yeah. can definitely, with a with a round based game like Countdown, you could definitely go through a round, use two of your abilities, and you're like, oh boy, I don't have anything for the next round. <laughs> and your grenade was really slow, and you felt like, oh, I don't yeah. even want to throw this, as opposed to <laughs> yeah. the the Destiny One experience, which is yeah, which did you like that? Yeah, every two seconds, grenade, yeah. grenade. And I mean, yeah. we were looking everywhere when we sat down at the station, looking at the skill tree, and mm -hmm. we were like, where is Intellect, discipline, strength, where is that? <laughs> and uh, couldn't find it. And you look on your gear, and your your gear is what has the uh, the agility, the recovery, and the armor. We were like, oh, shit, look at that. That's yeah. kind of a big change, isn't it? Yeah, that was mm -hmm. like the first thing I did, because I'm so used to Destiny 1, I immediately, I'm like, all right, how can I, I go to my armor to try to change around any stats on it to Where's make sure that it's still built. Right? Exactly, <laughs> I was just like, what am I rocking with? And then I'm like, what the hell is this? What is going on here? What do you yeah. think you're trying to pull on me, Bungie? Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it was, it, I'm actually, I'm glad that you said they sped up those, uh, the recharge rates on the abilities, though, because I remember playing our first game thinking everything felt pretty slow to recharge, except for those felt like, oddly faster than the other things uh, so i guess yeah. that makes sense right there doesn't yeah. it get ready for a lot the, of uh, primary weapon based gameplay yes. yeah a lot yeah. Yes. really I, I could see that rift really getting out of control if you have it that fast all the time yeah. i mean there is no reason not to use that one it was yeah. like put down rift uh, me and swain stacked it one time which got insane we were just had the empowering and the healing so mm -hmm. everyone just sort of stood on it and was just like melting stuff was um, was nuts. that the match where you, uh, Crucible Radio, played a team scrim against the DCP? Uh, hmm, you know what? Hmm. Oh, I think it was. Uh, I think it was that game. Hey, who who won that match anyway? Um, I'm pretty <laughs> sure it was uh, Crucible Radio. Was I'm, it? Uh, was it? Yeah. Upper scrailing. I think yeah, it was. It's that. coming. It's coming back to me. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. I, I that, think it, that was confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So so. Let's focus on abilities for a second there, because uh, for those who don't know, we do have new abilities in this game alongside your traditional melee and your grenade. And yes. uh, we were talking a little bit before the podcast went live, and you were sp certainly speaking about right now, the Empowering Rift is the uh, the, Dawn, the Dawn Blade special ability, right? Mm. Let's get let, me tell you about, let me tell you a little bit about the Dawn Blade, all right? Uh, you get that third ability. So again, <laughs> grenade, melee, and then like third is kind of like, it depends on subclass, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the Dawnblade gets a rift, which means you hold down the crouch button and you kind of lay down a zone right around your warlock. The zone doesn't go with you, but you can you just mark where it is and then you can go in and out of it. By the way, all this information and more can be found in my latest YouTube guide to the Dawnbreaker, youtube.com slash place. And you can change the rift to either be a rift of empowerment, meaning that when you're in it, you get an extra damage buff. And your teammates, too. If they're in that rift, you get the damage buff. Or you can have a healing rift, which when you're in there, it actually does two things. One is it makes your health regenerate automatically. Uh, and then it gives you an overshield if you're the Dawnblade in the rift. And that overshield, go watch the footage. I'm serious. Mm. It recharges in the blink of an eye. It it's looks really, really good. hard yeah. to take down a Dawnblade in their rift and that's one of their neutral it's basically like having a defender titan bubble almost mm -hmm. uh, that you can shoot through because it's not like in your face you, it's just you mm -hmm. stand in it you know what i mean it's just it's a really powerful option and uh, the gunslinger has a you know ability like that they actually have kind of a shade step like the night stalker mm -hmm. where yes. you can do a little juke move and again, it's not like the Night Stalker in terms of the cooldown is much longer. Yeah. Uh, however long, you know, 40, 
five to a minute or whatever it was. And you can tweak uh, the skill tree so that when you do the little juke move, it actually reloads your gun. So you become like a little bit of a, a McCree for anyone who mm-hmm. plays Overwatch out there. <laughs> Yeah, I read something about that, being able to kind of do a, a little bit of a shade step and reload at the same time. I was like, yeah, that's Overwatch. But yeah. <laughs> um, for the Empowering Rift thing, it, it's kind of, it seems like a better version of the uh, the Sunbreaker Titan Sunspot ability that nobody uses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, yeah. yeah. I was actually, I was watching some, I can't wait to see your video because I want to see the numbers and stuff that's associated with this, but I was watching uh, Holtzman play. And he was talking about that specific ability and just how good getting that health regen and that overshield is. And I was like, good, <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, I really want to play like the defender Captain America Titan Sentinel. who like throws the shield everywhere. But like it's going to have to be a really good build. Same yeah, thing with yeah. that new the the pole dancer blade pole dancer, dancer whatever that thing is. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah. yeah they're gonna have to be really good to take me off the dawn blade mm-hmm. because that dawn blade is sexy af right now <laughs> i'm positive that i'm gonna be all captain america shielding the entire the yeah. entirety of this <laughs> That's yeah all i can tell <laughs> yeah. i want to say though i want to talk about the striker ability and why it's my favorite because it actually makes you use <laughs> destiny's cover mechanic they actually yeah. made it a thing. I was like, holy crap, I'm using the cover mechanic right now, and it's not, like, stupid. It's actually Gorilla fighter, fighter, where are you? <laughs> I can bring the cover with me. It's actually useful now. I don't have to plant myself in, like, the one spot on the map that has a spot you can crouch in and do cover fire with. It's For those who cool. don't know, do you want to break it down, how the uh, yeah, cover... So the, uh, the, uh, the striker uh, ability is essentially you can create a wall that's sort of like just a bubble defense wall in front of you. You can either do a really tall one that is basically like a door blocker or like a, just a huge wall behind you so people can't shoot you, or you can do one that is exactly crouch height that you can then crouch behind and then aim ADS to pop up and shoot and stay back down on it i was using it to like slide into the plant area like the one doorway and then pop it after i like stop my slide so i could stay in the doorway and shoot at the guys while we tried to plant the bomb a lot of a lot of it is really cool how the short wall um auto crouches you so when Mm -hmm. you do slide and pop that it does Mm. put you in that crouch position so you can keep pressure uh, and immediately pop up and use that that cover mechanic as cool as that is, I think there's some good offensive potential there. I found the big wall to be so intriguing, and I really want to see how it gets how it gets used as as people really really find the best ways to use it. Because I, I saw everyone just putting a wall down and then going like, "Well, there's a big wall. I guess I'll <laughs> stand to the side of it and shoot yeah. around it mm-hmm. like a corner." Which is like that's not that's a that's a worse cover mechanic than just a wall. Um, yeah. But to put it to cut off one of those hallways to say, you want power ammo? Well, I'm putting a wall, so you better walk around. Or in those final moments where the bomb is ticking down, to literally fill a doorway yeah, and, and that's what I make them fight cut through it and shoot it. So yeah. rude, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, I love the potential there. I think there's a lot of big stuff there. I think the short wall will be great for, for maybe PvE when it's all about just, like, keep pressure on these enemies or, or help me melt this boss real quick. Well, let's all just put cover right here, but... There's a lot of potential with maybe even revives too. Of like throw down a big wall, get your revive. No BS about revive snipes there or anything like that because you just yeah. created cover. Yeah. So it's a it's a cool like team team element for Titans which hasn't really ever existed. Uh, I think that's Seriously. really really interesting. So with the wall, I'm uh, I imagine of course like all other abilities, it's on a timer. But um, if it takes a certain amount of damage, does it like dissipate? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. You can break it with. <laughs> With things, mm-hmm. with things. All right, I and that's, throw uh, rocks that's at it. It's pretty important <laughs> to realize in the in the rift too. I mean, it sounds obvious now, but when I was figuring it out, I would put it down, and I thought maybe I'd get health regen immediately, or I thought maybe I'd just melt through someone. But if I put it down and they already saw me as I'm doing it, they just melt you. I yeah, mean, you'll yeah. just get shot. And you try to get up, and you're like, well, I hope I'll just win because of the damage, and it's just not enough. So you <laughs> you still have to use it strategically, and I don't think that's going to be something. You just run over, put it on the cap zone, and be like, "Sorry, I win. Like I used the bubble." Um, well, it's definitely not like like that aggressive bubble popping technique from defenders. Mm-hmm. True, not at all. Uh, do we want to talk about changes to the supers that we know? 
Yeah, I don't care like if you how, want to, yeah, do it. Yeah, man. All right. Like how the <laughs> like Striker Titan now being a roaming super was yeah, yeah. Was yeah. very, very interesting. <laughs> I didn't. Funny. I only got to use it one time effectively because the very first match we played was against Ninja, like we said. And mm-hmm. I went to activate my slam and got melted before I could even activate it <laughs> in the last round. But then I got to use it later, and it was, it was like awesome to kind of. Slam. It's not like as powerful the initial slam, but then you basically have like the sun charge ability after that with yeah. like awesome shoulder charges out of nowhere. It, I don't know. Yeah. It's cool. Before, before okay. we got to play the gameplay and we were all watching the trailer uh there was that moment where zavala's like yeah and he like fists of havocs everybody and mega and i were like oh my god (laughs) and um after he fists everybody more enemies come and then his fist started going again and he goes in for another and i was like well that's not technically accurate you know i was thinking the same thing i was like they're really dropping the ball here at bungie and then we go into the gameplay like it's a roaming super now are you (laughs) kidding me this is amazing (laughs) Um, I think the the blast radius is a little bit tinier yeah. to like mm-hmm. compensate, but it's still fists of havoc. Like I just ran into a crowd, and there were two people kind of near me, and like boom, it's like I got I killed yeah. both of them anyway. Mm-hmm. And then you run around and like you're glowing blue, and I like headbutted some motherfucker down the <laughs> hall. Like, <laughs> you really look like Juggernaut. Like it's almost comical the animation <laughs> of the Titan running around in that super, and you just see someone like, sorry, listeners on iTunes, but he's just going. <laughs> cool. Your weapons cannot harm me. Just like like flying through and stuff, and you're just like, what is that? And you're just like kind of shooting at it. So man, uh, I, I, like I saw was... one. I I immediately was. That's what I said. I was like, what the fuck is that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw someone pop it. Uh, like. They they do the first slam outside of the room and then ran in the in the room as opposed to trying to get that initial damage. They just sacrificed their first slam and came in as such a harder target to hit in their super and then just cleaned the room up. It was crazy, but yeah, that was a that was a very terrifying thing to have come around the corner and just like it was uh, it was not easy to team fire. What about but the, easy uh, to melt when they come up short right in front of you because they don't realize that the blast radius has shrunk down quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Golden gun changed a little yeah, bit too, yeah? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that's where the attunement thing really comes into play, and I really want to see the other attunement mm-hmm. because the, the one for Goldie that we had, I was not a big fan of it because, oh boy, is that super short. Yeah, it is. Uh, mm-hmm. So, so I didn't. Maybe if you guys saw the other perks, I did not spend a lot of time with the with the hunter. But again, four perks for one attunement. One of them was uh, six shots with the goldie, but a short, a reduced timer. And yeah. man, the one time I really needed it, I popped it, got a kill, went, walked out the door thinking like I got at least two more. And then it was just over immediately. And I was like, <laughs> oh. here's okay. how the six shot golden gun works. You're like. It's high new. Oh, over already? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. it was high it's one o'clock. It's it's yeah. great if the team is all near each like other. Standing together. Yeah, if they're all really yeah. close, then you have six shots, so you can really like spam that shit. If you miss, yeah, I mean, you got you got plenty yeah. of chance to still wipe them, which is cool. But it is very short. And I think like I don't know, it, it, is that ideal for PvP in a world where there's only ever going to be four people on the mm-hmm. team? Mm-hmm. Do you want six if it's going to go away like that? I think the other attunement might really be yeah. an easy ah. choice for, for PvP. In PvE, I can see a, a gunslinger actually becoming yeah. useful again to yeah. just go bam, 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 and just yeah. take out that wall of Cabal. But um, yeah, not, not yeah. so much in PvP. It was a little goofy. That was the my six suspicion. It's going to be perfect yeah. for people like me who panic and just start firing <laughs> just, wildly oh, and, oh, like, oh. and have four of the six hit people. The six-shot golden gun has a higher ceiling you know what i mean like if everything is perfect if all the enemies are right there Mm -hmm. then boom you're gonna get the four but yeah it's like how often is that gonna happen whereas the other golden gun with three you know if that's the way it goes back to with the other perks on the skill tree uh it's a much higher floor Mm -hmm. because like you can just pop it and you can go roaming around looking for trouble it's like oh but you can only kill a maximum of three Okay, that's still There's three like quarters people, of a team so. wipe. Like, yeah. 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 I'm good. Yeah. So, um, I did like the. Uh, I kind of like the throwing knife, though. Change that it's kind of like a grenade 
throwing knife hybrid now because you can throw it and then it explodes. So, I saw yeah. I saw Lupo use it like once or twice where he like hit it against the wall as somebody was running and did a little bit of damage to them. So that's kind of better for I mean, mm-hmm. considering how often I throw a throwing knife and it just misses and it's worthless. <laughs> like, it's nice that it can still do something if you get it near him, I guess. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I did get one nice moment where like I killed someone like jumping and threw it in their head and then it explodes like that feels pretty fucking cool to kill somebody with a golden or a throwing knife that way I saw um, I saw sixes when stuff caught on fire with uh, incendiary grenades and maybe something from the dawn blade I thought that was interesting Mm -hmm. uh, because the gunslinger does seem to feel a lot different uh, whereas the dawn blade those grenades are just the same but if incendiaries uh, doesn't sound like they would be a one shot kill if a sticky isn't going to mm-hmm. be so that's uh it really creates a whole different vibe of, of of how you play aggressively or how you play passively to try to use those uh those grenades well um the uh trip mines were back and lightning grenades were back but lightning grenades have yeah. a delay if you yes see that. i really like that <laughs> yeah <too. laughs> it's uh, it's interesting because you're not going to get that immediate like there are some lightning grenades where you throw it on the back wall at sea in Twilight Gap, and it goes uh-huh. boom, 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 and just shatters everyone in that platform. Yes. <laughs> Maybe I'll miss that. Uh, but that little <laughs> delay really offers you some opportunities uh, to, to maybe bait, maybe get someone to chase you a little bit, put it down so when they do come around the corner, suddenly, boom. Because if you threw that lightning grenade too soon and they just hear it, they just won't, won't pursue. Run away. So yeah. You might have some opportunities there. And then you just gotta, you just got to get that timing back. And if you use trip mines in D1, you'll be pretty comfortable with lightning grenades in in destiny 2 so it's a pretty nice change and mm-hmm. that that grenade was has been hella powerful for three years mm-hmm. and never really saw any change so that's my nice. enemy number one in destiny so i'm very <laughs> happy to see it changed yep. Everybody oh, press f in the chat <laughs> to pay respect to the d1 lightning made <laughs> oh. How about counter supers, man? It talks about, was how were supers to counter with like the weapon sets that we that we have now? You know, in D two with all these different uh, categories and stuff. A higher, we've got a higher time to kill now, so that's, that's an interesting mm-hmm. question. How it is uh, countering supers? So one thing I don't think anyone fully understood before the day was over, uh, there was definitely some some ideas people had uh, was that the secondary weapon slot, your elemental gun does increase damage to all supers and it's not a solar weapon against a solar dawn blade in pvp um uh oh, what's his name claude confirmed that on twitter uh jerome about about that he said use your secondary that elemental gun will do more damage against supers so you just got to switch to those smgs really that's awesome mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, that is fantastic mm-hmm. yeah yeah, and 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 I believe they do their normal thing in PVE, but that that seems to be the new wow. gun counter rather than just hoping your primaries are all are all focused in doing enough damage. Uh, I, I, the interesting thing about supers, I find, and we don't know this about whatever the Void Warlock is going to be called, and um, well, we know the Sentinel is a roaming super as well. I I my theory is that all supers become roaming. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. But that means you don't have the ease of those shutdown supers. That Nova Bomb is not going to be yeah. the biggest explosion that you don't have to aim. You just put it at your feet. The Striker Titan, you can't stand in one place and then clear an entire capture zone. You could still maybe hide around that corner and hope that they come really close. But I think it's going to be harder to use supers to just immediately shut down another one. The only thing I can see being the best counter to supers is the Golden Gun. And mm-hmm. that's that's if you're in position because you don't you still can't pop it out in the open, but you got to pop it, use it quick, yep. um, and then hope that that dawn blade doesn't already see you and chuck a sword to force the train. Because <laughs> I, I I see the dawn blade having a huge advantage over everything with its aerial abilities. Mm-hmm. You can get so high up and, and just and stay up there and just drop swords down mm-hmm. below you. And I don't see any hard counter to that beyond the golden gun. Mm-hmm. And if someone's shooting you in the air while you're a Don blade, Oh, guess what? I hold the crouch button for like half a second. And whew, I rock it to the ground. Yeah, like a that's freaking, so freaking missile. Cool, man. And you generate <laughs> the hell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's very interesting. We need to talk about power ammo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Well, let's let's go through each of the weapon slots because it's all changed, hasn't it? Everything's changing, with yeah, the exception yeah. of the primary. Yeah. Which is, I mean, they're kind of changed oh. in the sense that they can now never be elemental. That's kind of a change. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so in in D one, you have three weapon positions. You have uh, primary, special, heavy. Right. Mm -hmm. Now in D two, you have three weapon slots again, but this time you have a uh, kinetic primary. Mm -hmm. Elemental primary. If you don't know what kinetic means, I mean, it's mm. just it's a non-elemental yeah, gun. Mm -hmm. Elemental. Yeah. yeah. Kinetic primary, elemental primary, and power weapon. And your power weapon is going to be kind of a new hybrid between special weapons in D1, fusion sniper shotgun, and heavy weapons in D1, like rocket launcher, uh, the brand new grenade launcher, and all that stuff. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and that's pretty cool. And the yeah. first question I had which many other people had too, which was, if it's all combined into one, why the fuck would I ever use anything but a <laughs> rock launcher? <laughs> yeah, that's and the question. the answer to that is pretty clear. It's ammo. Yeah. So the first thing I did, I put on a rocket launcher when I went into the game, and again, you don't start with ammo for your power weapon. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds into the round that we played in every round, uh, power ammo would spawn in two different locations on the map. I need to run up, hold square or whatever, and pick it up. And then it would only go to you. And I learned that out so painfully <laughs> many times. Because <laughs> I would run up to the wall with my team and be like, yeah, bro, let's get like shotgun ammo together or whatever. And like, I hear the pickup noise. And I'm like, good to go. And then I run into battle. <laughs> and I slide into battle with my shotgun. And I just... Poof air like, into that fight. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, yeah, it that only little goes... flag popped out and then <laughs> yeah, the the <laughs> uh, It only goes to the person who picks it up. Doesn't matter if your teammate's right there. Doesn't matter how many people are there. You can't pick it up off of bodies. You can't respawn with it when you die. One man, one ammo position. And the rocket launcher that I had gave me one rocket, just one. Yeah. And the shotgun that I had gave me six shotgun shells i believe same thing with the sniper yeah. so that's the trade-off you it. have a love that weaker, that sounds yeah it's right cool it's sorry if you have yeah. like a weaker power weapon like sniper if you're i don't know considering that weak mm -hmm. um more shots and then if you have a low skill power weapon like a rocket launcher which it's like you're not trying to get headshots with a rocket launcher nothing like it's yeah. just yeah. It's one yeah. done you know what i mean and that's their new system yeah. Which I I think it's, it's a great really system, and the yeah. fact that only one person gets ammo is like the most important part to me. Because yeah. if everybody still got one rocket, the answer would obviously still be okay. Four rockets is yeah. we can wipe the team crazy. with four rockets. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. But now and, it, I mean it makes a lot. It makes I was using snipers more than anything, like snipers and shotguns more than I was using rockets yeah. or grenade launchers. Yeah, I got real into that grenade launcher. That oh, thing was so was right oh, yeah. in my sweet spot. Uh, as Fallout said, we're getting one rocket. If you're going to hang out on the far side and try to wait to pick up ammo and then sneak around the back, you want a little bit more. Um, but the grenade launcher kills in two shots and you get four. And if you just hit oh. all the other team, it's like everyone at half damage. All right, everyone push in and clean up. That thing was nice. And it has a comfortable explosion. It's not like you need extreme accuracy with that either uh so there's definitely some shots where i kind of hit a corner where they were about to peek out and they took enough damage to take to take one more and die so that thing was that thing was pretty nice especially if you flank with it and mm -hmm. people just don't know how to react in time and you just start going junk 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 yes. did any of you get to use the fusion rifle because i think i fired I it like one time bit. and i did it in pve so <laughs> it didn't matter <laughs> yeah i tried to use it in the game um i i didn't i didn't experience any easy kills i didn't experience anything where it was like oh this is more powerful because yeah. it's in the power slot it functions yeah, near identical to the uh to the ones from d1 i had mixed feedback on the shotgun, I had some people say, wow, it really mapped. It was like a high-impact shotgun. And then I heard uh, some people say, like, oh, I really didn't get much out of that at all. I really had to be right up next to him. So I think we'll find that out with, with mods and uh, perks it, yeah. or whatever they are. I but yeah, I mean, it felt much, fine. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just don't know if they went, okay, now that these are in the power slot, we'll make them insane. Yeah. Uh, I think they're going to play like they play. Uh, the sniper 
definitely kind of like a low aim assist vibe, but felt very much like a sniper. No mm-hmm. easier, no harder to to learn how to use. I think there was good a lot of the, good with the empowerment rift, the sniper, right? Oh yes, it, yeah. Then you could like body people with it. I think yeah, that's the rumor. Yeah. yeah, a lot of rumors going around that day. <laughs> a, lot a lot of rumors, rumors, rumors about this going around that day. Yeah. Did you hear? Did Nobody you hear? was. Did you hear? You hear? I hear the rumors <laughs> can do this. I hear the message. I hear there's you can three bolt about some the, fusions. Yeah, about the dawn blade is like there's so much to, to like about that with sniping is like do I use my empowering rift and get those really strong body shots, or do I use the sniper and float in the air? And I you see like a, look at some hush gameplay. He uses that all the time where he just puts the sniper mm-hmm. on and. And it's like it's like you don't do that sideways float like you do, with in currently it feels like it's a little more stable, like they're putting more emphasis on that perk to make yeah. it appealing. So sniping, it's like pop sn- sniper, uh, it's fly fly up along those long lanes while there's guys in your in your, in front of you taking the initial grunt damage, and you just kind of float over them and and pick people off. There's so much potential there. I'm really excited. <laughs> And something else that you might enjoy, story, mm-hmm. is because uh, I think I remember you telling me once that like everybody feels this way. Right now in D1, ammo feels like really weird because it's very <laughs> like it's not it doesn't pop up very frequently. Like you're never quite sure when like the enemy has a special ammo and you're like, oh, shit. Well, I guess that guy had a shotgun. Well, fuck me, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Um, in D2, you grab the power, uh, the power ammo. And then down in the kill feed or the whatever feed where all the information is like scrolling, it says, uh, you know, Fallout just picked up the shotgun ammo. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Yes. And it says where you picked it up. Yeah. Yeah. Really? It says, it says so, Fallout loaded sniper at shops. Yeah, or like, like it'll yeah, it's like a picture of a sniper. So you don't need to like read it. You don't need to yeah. read. All right. And the at, and the <laughs> at shops. <laughs> The at shops thing is another thing that they added to the game where they have in-game call-outs call for outs. locations yeah, I was gonna underneath say, the radar. Yeah. Yeah. Two so things that I noticed was every time someone moved into a different region on the map, there was a universal call-out, and that is going to be... like uh, that, that helps people like me that is rubbish at call-outs. And you spy the yep, thing on too. the box! Ah! <laughs> you know, like, I do a lot of yeah. that. But there was another thing I picked up on as well from watching the gameplays. The radar seemed to be far less effective. There was guys standing right in front. I could see them on the screen, but they weren't depicted on radar. How would that? How did that feel? You know, like... Two whole... things about radar. Yeah. Two things about radar. Uh, one, I think it's been confirmed that the radar range shortened. I shortened, yeah. Short. And that I didn't notice right away, but... A couple of times, it's like, well, there's nobody here. It's like, holy shit. And then, like, some yeah, guy like, runs around the corner. Like, Where did you, you come from? And then uh, the second thing is that when you descope with whatever gun you have, the radar doesn't come back right away. Mm-hmm. So there's moments in D1 right now where you're, you know, aiming down a lane and you're like, I should check my back. But mm-hmm. you don't want to turn around because we like to be efficient. So you just yeah. descope, free <laughs> scope. You yes. just. Tap that scope. And like you're just quick. you're yeah. catching it out of the corner of your eye. Yeah. But when you descope in D two, you're like, oh, oh there are. it is. So like it, it takes like a second to to come up. Yeah. So you're you're gonna have to get used to that for sure. I like with that. all Sounds the good. information that they present to you in the game, the all the details. They tell you who picks up ammo and where. They tell you who pops their super. They tell you who's sitting on a super. With all that, I would have loved it if they just took the radar out. But either uh-huh. way, it's a very satisfying thing to me because. I've always said this radar really, really emphasizes those dumb standoffs that you were just like, I know you're on the other side of that wall and I'm not (laughs) moving until you move. Okay. 15 meters away. Yeah. And then you stand there on black shield on the other side of a doorway for two and a half minutes until it's like, all right, I guess we'll go cap this zone. (laughs) Um, So, so I think that change is good. And I think everything about countdown and everything about those PVP changes really encouraged engagements and really, really made you go like, oh, oh, I have to be up here. I cannot yeah. hang in the back, or else I'll, I'll yeah. I'm useless, and I won't get any kills. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no, there's no appeal there. There's no safety appeal. There's no camping appeal. Uh, so all of that was just great. And like, just, just get your, keep your awareness up, and and uh, and use the information provided, yeah. and, and you'll you'll be just fine without that radar just making everything slow down and to a halt. Just makes yeah, me it was so interesting excited. to me. You know, it like, was interesting to me, me how too, you man. how you say that bones like it. And it you you couldn't like stay back. I, I think it's really interesting how so much of the game is slowed down, but at the same time, it's like they're forcing it to be 
play more. Like yes. it's slowed oh, yeah. down in how you move <laughs> and how you kill people, but there's more action at the same time because they, at least mm-hmm. even in the game type we played, like it forces you to kind of move toward that point or you're going to mm-hmm. lose if you don't. Like mm-hmm. everything about it just kind of yeah, forced. Yeah, on, a, on a very literal like level, the Guardians are slower, but in no yeah. way is PvP slow. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's all I mean like, is like, right, yeah, like yeah. It's slower time to kill and you're slower, but at the same time the game is more... It's like faster yeah. almost in a and way. It gives you more time to think. Like the like you already talked about it where you just you spawn in, you don't have special ammo right now, you run out there and go, Oh, someone else did. What did I even die from? Or like where is that person? And all that. Like mm-hmm. so much about that gives you more time to think and it does it does work for you. So your brain isn't just going like what? Like yeah. where did that you know, in that short amount of split second time, like the call outs just being on the map are so amazing because yeah. you look and you see that icon and you see the bomb go down and then you just go they put the bomb on b also known as rugs yeah. done yeah. there's yeah. none of that like oh you don't know the sweaty call outs you don't know that that's called yeah. uh <laughs> that pillar over there is called dildo like come on man everyone knows that <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, no man. it's all done and you don't just go, by the, the, the thing on the, is over there by the thing oh, yeah. i died like none yeah. of that just you say the word that's on your screen Helps and it's going to make everything just go bam 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 uh, we got a lot of really good uh like information blurbs from uh tier one geeks giggle monster and he mm-hmm. um he was mentioning that the footsteps and audio cues had been massively um improved upon is that something that was noticeable straight away when you were playing I don't know if I noticed it immediately. Um, I, I do. I do know that they mentioned that. I couldn't tell you mm-hmm. if it existed. I think there was just like a lot going on in the environment yeah, yeah. we were playing in. Sure. Where there's like, yeah, you had the nice headphones on, but there's like, yeah, 400 people behind you. Like, <laughs> yeah. Are you yeah, I can and, imagine. Yeah, pretty yeah. much the pressure is like, all right, I have like, I have like five minutes to play right now. Yeah. Like, yeah. quickly, everything that I wanted to check this time that I got to play quickly. Yeah. Try to yeah. do that. Like, yeah, it was very yeah. hard to notice yeah. a lot of the minor details in the, really, in the short amounts of time to play. Yeah. Not that you shouldn't listen to our show because we're the best, but uh, the fire team oh, chat sorry. that uh, those guys had with with Luke and, and Mark uh, pretty much right. There's like four o'clock. I remember them mm-hmm. watching them do it. And there's a lot of good info in there. Um, one thing we didn't touch on yet about the PVP actually, uh, before we maybe get off PVP entirely, yep. is the map design. Yes, 4v4. So they're all a little smaller. I would say smaller. Midtown is smaller than Rusted Lands for sure. I think there's some yeah. space that wasn't used because everyone just went, Mm-hmm. It's like, where do I go? I'm going to run towards that big B. And they just yeah. took B lines. Yeah. Um, and, they, and it sure might move in other game modes. But uh, they laid this out. Crucible maps are designed for specific crucible game types. So Midtown, the map, was design, designed to play Countdown. I don't know if they meant it to rhyme or not, mm-hmm. but, but that map was designed to play the two-objective elimination system, which worked out great i mean it felt so good on the map and and they they said that yeah if it works for other things great but they're not going to force it and they're not going to tweak game modes or tweak maps to go like well we have this map and it's got to work for control clash trials and skirmish like they they're not trying they're not going to force that um obviously they need maps that are that are multi-dimensional yeah um but knowing that, I was like, "Oh wow, that that could not have been more clear that this map just just worked great for that for that game mode." Mm-hmm. And uh, and a lot will evolve uh, in, in the gameplay compared to what you're watching. Uh, one day is not nearly enough to mm-hmm. to uncover, oh, no matter yeah. how hard people obsessively go like. <laughs> how, how do I figure this out? My name's Fallout Plays, and I need to know this thing right away. Like, yeah. Fallout will have plenty of work to do once yeah. the game comes out. I just thought that was a nice feature. And uh, shout out to uh, our buddy Cooley at Bungie. He got the uh, the credit for, for designing Midtown. Cooley also made uh, Burning Shrine, which mm-hmm. so many people like. My favorite maps. Yeah. So, ah. uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm so excited to see the rest of the maps now because, oh, man, I'm so tired of Crossroads. <laughs> I mean, Crossroads is great. I don't know if Cooley designed that one too. <laughs> Works yeah, for the doubles. Focus is just important. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So PvP, we've uh, we've scratched the surface. Yes. Sounds PvE. like a lot of great changes, man. PVE. Thumbs up for uh, me. Stuff. I really liked the new strike. I thought it was fun. 
I didn't play this. Uh, right. and, yeah, Moving on. <laughs> All right. Well, there we go. The, uh, <laughs> I like the, uh, the enemy. The enemy shield types are a lot more noticeable in the in the PVE content. Oh, I noticed. Yeah. yeah. Like not like kind of a flimsy aura. It's like a big freaking thing around mm-hmm. that you can tell that thing i need to shoot that with fire like that is yeah. how I take it down like yeah. i saw a minotaur and minotaur shields are now like the same type of shield that like hydras have so yes. if you think of the template yeah, in the vault of glass it's like that makes so much more sense for the vex thank you that- uh-huh. <laughs> beautiful <laughs> Um, the, uh, the, I don't know, everything just in the strike looked really gorgeous, I thought, and it, like, it felt bigger in a lot of ways, like, just the environments felt bigger, like, I, I know I'm on a track, I'm on a destiny track, I know <laughs> yeah. exactly where this strike is leading, I'm gonna fight a boss at the end, but a lot of it, like, felt kind of cool and open, like, jumping parts at the beginning and stuff like that. That will get boring when I play it 400 freaking times to grind yeah. for a gun later, but <laughs> awesome, a, it was great the first time, at least. Did any I, like loot drop? Uh, no, um, they had like all that okay. crap turned yeah. off. It seemed locked yeah, up. Yeah, I know. That would have been great though if I was playing in like a, a new exotic dropped or something. I was <laughs> I got the only this. person who saw it. <laughs> Everyone like, over here. <laughs> yeah. People would be like was, pushing uh, me out of the chair to try to go. Dado punches me <laughs> and grabs the controller. The so bunch of you guys are scrambling to just like yeah. just rip the monitor <laughs> out. Like, out. Nobody <laughs> like that. We're all like we're all holding the bungee employees back while we try to find more things in the game. He got the pocket infinity too. together. <laughs> to find the new exotic and literally defeat the bungee employees. <laughs> no, Everyone unfortunately, that did not happen. Wanted to play strikes, and I got in line with um, Ninja with Noel. We were hanging out and talking about what we thought of the PvP, and we were like, "Why don't we do a strike?" Yeah, yeah, let's do a strike. Mm. And we were in line, and Bungie, God love them, they were working so hard the whole day. It was probably really difficult to keep all that shit together, and yeah. they were probably pulling their hair out, trying to keep people from, like, live streaming secretly, like, mm-hmm. while they were playing or whatever. And so Ninja and I wait in line, and we finally get to sit down, and we meet some random guy. We're like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. And, you know, we're getting ready to go. And we played for about, like, two minutes. And then some new guy with the clipboard came over. He was like, all right, you guys got to get off right now. You got to get going. <laughs> and Ninja and I were like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. Like, we just, we literally just sat down. And he's like, he's like, don't, don't tell me that you just sat down. Come on, man. We got to was like, what? <laughs> like, I didn't. I didn't want to like argue yeah. with the guy. Get yourself because, thrown out of the event. Yeah, because like you know like what I mean. Dick. I under, yeah. I understand. They're they're confused and busy. It's not easy to run this yeah. shit. I've run tournaments before for like other games, and like sometimes you're like, "Don't fuck with me, man." Mm-hmm. Tell me you played for two minutes. <laughs> Tell me another one. Yeah. So we left, and then later, later I found Mega. I was like, "Hey, how did you? How long did you get to play the the strike for?" He was like, "Around like." 20-ish minutes. I was like, yeah, I, mean, I, just, well, I had all the time I wanted to play. <laughs> but uh, Wait, but I no, it have was... a, I have a story yeah. about the, the strike because, uh, yeah, there was like one main line and people would pick out like, hey, who wants to do PvP? And then you might be able to get in a game a little faster. So I was in line with uh, the Destiny Reset podcast guys, uh, Cyborg and Arrow, uh, Arrow, and they wanted to play the strike. And I was like, I'm just trying to get on the story mission. So this girl comes around with the clipboard and she's they're like, we'll just strike. And then she's like, okay. And she's like, okay, well, it's like, it's like a 45 minute event. So that's why it's taking a little longer for the strikes. And to us, that was like a detail. So we're like 45 minute strikes, like no way. And then, so we kind of like perk up at that. And then cyborg asked her like, wait, really? It takes 45 minutes. And like, the way he said it clearly sounded like, what, it takes that long? Like, no way it takes that long. But, like, he was just excited. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she goes, and she goes, like, uh, he's like, is it, like, that's how long the game takes? Or, like, people just are, don't know what, what they're doing over there, like, because it's new content. <laughs> and she goes, like, wait, what tier are you guys? Like, she looks at our passes. And she, like, pulls <laughs> his pass out. And she goes, and you, what are you, you guys are, like, content creators? And he's like, yeah, we're, we're all podcasters. And she's like, and, like, everyone here is, like, they do Destiny stuff. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I think everyone does. And she goes, so, yeah, I think everyone here knows what they're doing. <laughs> he was just like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's like, that's not what I meant. And she just walked away. We were all cracking oh, up. Jesus. <laughs> he was just like, yeah, I'm pretty sure everyone playing Destiny here doesn't like, what's reload? Anyone? Like, <laughs> <laughs> ain't got no chill. Orientation. But it was funny. We, oh, my God. We laughed at him, and then we were also like, but half an hour long strikes, though, like, that's pretty nice. And I'm sure once you get better weapons and you're just mm. yeah. running through people with the super you know how to use, it won't take quite 45 minutes. But it was really cool to see, like, a strike was, like, a good chunk of content and not yeah. something you're going to 
complete in three minutes by speed running it. Yeah. From what I saw, yeah. a lot of people didn't complete it at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People were struggling, but I think those yeah. were people who were playing more at the beginning. <laughs> Mm. People, well, people who were playing who had more the... than two minutes. Yeah. 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 Well, it, it, I think it was just people playing at the beginning of the day. It was a lot stricter, the enforcement on how much time you had at the beginning of the day. But by the end, at least, like, it was kind of, it had cleared out a lot. So if you wanted to sit down and play, you really had all the time you wanted. Like, especially in the PC area, for some reason. I don't know why. I check in and I played so much PC without. Yeah, I know. Exactly. I just, was, you could just sit at one. There were just open ones. Like, I'm just going to sit at this and play. Who cares? Like, yeah. nobody going to stop me right now i had one woman say like hey i went like went over to like an empty one and i was kind of like clearly like hey is like anyone gonna stop me and i walked over and this girl sees me and she goes like hey did you check in i was like oh do i have to check in to play that and she's like yeah just go put your name down so i go over to this other person and, and i'm like hey can i check in and play the campaign and she's like do you have an appointment and i'm like no and she's like okay <laughs> just grab an open one and i was like dude all right. <laughs> they kept saying that to me too. They kept asking me if I had an appointment. I'd be like, no. And they're like, just go play. I'm like, well, what the hell's the point of the appointment? <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> the, trick is, the trick is to wait for PvP because they need to feel someone to get the games going. They can't yeah. wait for the one guy at the other side of the room who's yeah. in line yeah. to put him in the last spot. So they're just like, hey, anyone for PvP? And I'm like standing by the PC. He's like, yeah, I'm ready. Me. And I'm what like, is this game? I think in. I'll give it a shot. It's good, yes. sir. <laughs> 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 Being as though you've mentioned it, how was it on PC then? Yeah, let's go and dive on into that. Sorry. My... Sorry, I know you're a mouse and keyboard guy. I know you you played Battlefield and Destiny was, was uh, not your main thing because of the controller and you do the mouse and keyboard. Mm-hmm. You are going to be a happy guy whenever yeah. it comes out on PC. You are going to be a very, very happy man. I'm going to shit your PC, pants, dude. <laughs> The PC literally made you like. I felt sick where I was just like, I get on the PC and I'm just like, oh my god, like, is oh my god, Overload. it's like, yeah, holy shit. And for those and of said, you listening oh. at home who like like to play console, I understand. I'm a console player too, Me and too. I I get really sick of hearing like the oh, PC master race. It was <laughs> so I'm sick of that. Like, yeah, yeah, shut I'm up. a PC guy, and I'm shut sick of it. Up. You're so annoying, you PC people. And then like, <laughs> like I, I sat down to play PC, and it was like. <laughs> Days of sunshine. I was like, this is. It was so welcome, beautiful, yeah, yeah. and smooth. Yes. And I was, I was losing my shit. Yeah. Losing it. It was gorgeous. I mean, the raindrops on the story mission. I played the campaign. I, that's yeah. what I, I split off. We were hanging out. You know, most of us were in a group, Fallout and Mega and uh, CR and 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 the people I, and I know and stuff like that. And I literally was just like. <laughs> I'm gonna go play some PC, and I just like disappeared yeah. and sat down by myself. And and Crucible was great. I was still getting used to it at the time. It was like a lot of chaos, and Meg is standing over my shoulder making fun of me. And then I get two kills, and I'm like, see. But but when I really whatever had the- when I played, you kept grabbing my shoulders when I was playing <laughs> in a PC. So don't try to just play. I wasn't about to let you be better than me. Ah, uh, but- naturally. <laughs> That yeah. rain, the fire, the cabal thing that comes down and dematerializes, like, every bullet oh, of the auto rifle was, like, you saw it. You just saw the bullets hit, and you saw the yeah. cabal, like, take the shots, and it wasn't just those, like, one-clicky movements where they just, like, bounce yeah. once, and they always bounce that same way, pop their heads, they always die the same way. <laughs> it was, like, they took those shots and kind of just, like, ooh, 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 and, like, and, and took the hits like that. It was just... It was so freaking gorgeous. It was so insane. Freaking <laughs> Lupo. I want to point out the game did look great on PS4 as well. It's just the Absolutely. frame rate. It was, so, sure. it, it was sure. so smooth, the frame rate. So for PvP yeah. is where it really like, was a huge it difference. A difference. I think. It, just, yeah. it just felt like that scene in The Matrix where you know, you're know you Neo in the medical bay and you're like, why do my eyes hurt? And then yeah. Lu- Lupo Morpheus comes by and he's like, yeah. because you've you never, never used them used before. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm going to touch it I'm going to touch it story in a suit with sunglasses. Uh, Lupo did look like, like he looked like a little kid at a candy store. Oh, yeah. He didn't record anything. He no, was, Lupo was, he was like, Lupo to was like I don't want to. Told me that he didn't record anything. <laughs> yeah, he was like, he was like, he was like, I know I need to record stuff, but I don't want to leave the PC area. Like, he was so excited. Can I take this with me? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm sitting over there in the corner with like a cardboard sign and a cup. I'm like, footage, sir. Anyone have any footage? <laughs> footage Can I have any footage, please? Please, <laughs> footage. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, I, yeah I don't. Add, I don't I think it like, be fun. Real. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm all over the place. I'm I, too excited. Yeah. But yeah. you were bringing up how the coolness and PVE stuff, like the enemies, kind of not being so stock when you kill them. My favorite yeah. aspect of the PVE was having like NPCs around. Yeah, when, man. Playing like oh, having some yes, you know, making the world feel more alive and like I'm not yeah. just this solitary person obviously put in a video game like uh, everything feels more alive when Zavala is like get in my bubble and fucking slams that <laughs> yes yeah. sir hell yeah, yeah. and, and then bubble. like they're, they're like all elements of that and and so you you fight off the tower and uh, and and that's a condensed version of the story mission that's not the full thing we played they made it seem very demo y so you do that and Zavala covers you and you're like oh hell yes like I'm fighting with Zavala this is my dream come true and then he sends you <laughs> off and it's like hey go check out where the speaker is and you walk off and you're like all right now it's now it's destiny I've got my uh, my my pathway and I've got someone in my ear uh, but it wasn't it was Zavala and Cade talking when there was stuff so you're getting filled in when you finally land on that ship you're up there and and it's and it's Zavala going like, Kate, how's it going? And he's like, Bam, bam, we're losing ammo. So it was not just like, hmm, here's a detail about the ship you're on, and also you better win. And it was just like, yeah, like, it, like still stuff was happening, and you felt a sense of urgency, like, all right, I need to get to the top here because Kate is apparently dying, and and Zavala is still defending the the tower. And then at the beginning, right when you think like, all right, see you, Zavala, that was fun. I'm glad I saw you for that one scripted event. And we're back to getting voiceover. You walk out of the room and you see some more cabal and you shoot ones. And then, boom, Nova Bomb shows up. And Ikora floats oh, in yeah. and you're like, oh, yes, like, this is not over. It was just <laughs> the, the interactions oh, were so, so, cool. so wonderful. It's just. Yeah. And, I, and I'm so excited because, like, what they showed at the, the talk was that there's going to be basically more NPCs around the world anyway. Like, when you're patrolling for yes. adventures oh, and stuff. God, and oh, my God, Oh, my God. I'm so I'm I've n I'm it's ridiculous to be excited to patrol in Destiny to me, but I'm yeah. so excited <laughs> to like, patrol right now. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yes. I want to go on go adventures on. and go into a cave and find yeah. a boss at the end of it and shit. I feel like it's I'm playing Breath of the cool, Wild man, Destiny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Okay, so real quick, there's a lot to talk about in this episode, and we we are on a, a time schedule to some degree. So if we miss talking about some topic, I'm sure we'll talk about it. I Next no, week, next I was gonna, gonna this is a very good point because yeah, we're, we're never yeah. going to talk about D2 again. Yeah, <laughs> next, next week, week we're going to I've got like a long trials guide on how to use Icebreaker. Um, <laughs> stay, stay tuned for that. Um, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to bring on a guest who is a, a Plaguelands yeah. Sherpa. He'll, he'll walk you through <laughs> getting, getting new artifacts if you want to just slightly increase the role of your Yolder. I'm glad that Tones <laughs> is eating up so much of this limited podcast. Joke. Yeah. <laughs> but it's totally worth it. Well, but we, um, got, okay, so we got exactly 20 minutes left, so we could uh, probably open up for questions pretty soon. Next week, we're going. To, I've got some notes talking about um, PC builds, the 30 frames a second issues, no dedicated servers, the negatives, you know, like, and constructive um, support around that. We can cover that, like, next week in great detail. I think I'm glad a, that you brought that up. Yeah, there's a lot I mean, to talk about, but, like, um, there's, there's also some really good um, feedback surrounding these um you know issues and it's not like we're unaware of them of course we are it's not like we're not disappointed or you know we don't care it's th there's lots of care and consideration there but it's a big topic so i think next week we can probably tackle on all of that but for now let's what do you guys want to know in the chat what do what do you want to ask the guys that were on the floor testing the yeah. game your, themselves I want to answer my most asked question yep. of this entire time, which is, did I lick bones? And the answer <laughs> is, yes, I did lick bones. <laughs> did he pay? Right. <laughs> he didn't pay he for didn't, lick, yes. He gave me a bagel afterwards. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's, That's better than money. I had to pay. That's better than money. <laughs> Bed and breakfast, there you go. There we go. <laughs> so now you all have that answer. It was the first thing I did when I saw him was I licked him. It was a beautiful moment. Yeah, so that was our first interaction as human beings. <laughs> the same the start of a beautiful relationship. Yeah. Here's a really good uh, question here from a friend of mine. Did it feel like you could take on a 2v1 situation better than in Destiny 1 in mm -hmm. PvP? Uh, or was it about the same? Or was it more challenging? You know, like, how effective can you be as a, like, a solo aggressor? You know? Take it. 
anything that comes out of my mouth ever, not just about D2, with a, with a grain <laughs> of salt. Bullshit. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Total bullshit. Grain of salt. I, I mean, we only played, I don't know, like 10 games day. the whole day, yeah. something mm-hmm. like that. But um, I think it felt a little bit more challenging just because there's a decline in weapons that can, like, burn you in one hit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Taking away the special, replacing it with power ammo, which not everybody is going to get their hands on in a round. And if the grenades are weaker, the melee is a little bit weaker, it, it's much more emphasis on team shooting in coordination. And I'm not saying it's obviously impossible to win a 1v2 situation, but y- you have to play it smart. Definitely have to play it smart. Great. Great. I would agree with that. I would agree. It's, I mean, again, it always comes down to how, I guess, coordinated the people you're playing against are more than anything. Because, I mean, if you're really, really good, like Fallout, and you're playing against two guys that aren't working together, he can probably beat them fairly easily in a 2v1 in general. But if they're coordinated, it's it's going to be really hard. Not, not, too, not uh, easily, but, you know, yeah, whatever. Not, not to actually talk about Destiny 1 right now, but, like, <laughs> actually surviving... 1v2s is not because you have a like a rocket launcher or something like that like you got to yeah. use everything there and part of surviving in those 1v3 scenarios is your ability to back up and put things in front of you and actually I think the increased time to kill might help you in mm-hmm. that scenario mm-hmm. because Delicious. defeating them is not about oh I hope that they are squishy and I will kill them fast with my basic <laughs> approach it's about I'm going to funnel you into this room you come at me but I'm ready yeah. And I got you on the jump here, and I hit you with a grenade or something like that. And then I'm very quickly going to turn around and be ready for that next guy. Or like, hey, you guys were kind of splitting me and both coming from both sides, so I'm going to back up so now you're both in front of me, and I can do double damage with my grenade or something like that and get both of you a little weakened. So in the sense that like when you get flanked and shot from your side, taking a little, little bit more damage is kind of nice because it's not like you just go, bam, bam, dead, and you're like, oh, I'm couldn't turn left in a matter of milliseconds. It's like, bap, bap, whoa, something's hitting me from the side. I'll duck back into this door. And I think that's going to help with those extended engagements and staying alive if you want to. If, you, if your vibe is to, to be that sneaky guy who can always disappear, I think that's going to be... Um, it, it goes both ways. It's harder to kill two people, but it's much easier to stay alive as one. No. Great. Okay. To some degree. Kona J's got, is it true that Destiny 2 will be delayed for PC? And that's been confirmed as yes, there is a delay. Mm-hmm. We don't know how long the delay will be, but very quickly on that one, all PC gamers that I know that are of, you know, any like enthusiastic kind of level of, of PC games won't care how long yeah. it is delayed. As PC gamers over the last few years, we have been very, very disappointed with a lot of releases that have come out because <laughs> yep. they've been released in a shocking, yeah. shocking poor state. It's basically like day one, you're waiting for the first patch. So anyone who's really serious about playing it on PC won't really care too much. I mean, obviously they want to play it and they're like, they're going to be disappointed they can't play it, but they're not going to rant and rage about the fact that it's delayed because they just want it to work. So yeah, it's there is a delay, but like... if they delay it, it's for a reason, and I'm going to be personally happy with whatever, whenever it comes out. Yeah. Basically, the only thing that delay means to me, I don't think it's going to deter anybody who was only going to be a PC gamer yeah. from playing, but it essentially says to me, I have to play this game when it comes out, so I'm buying it on console. <laughs> yeah, me too. And then later, I'm buying it on PC. So basically, it just secured two sales from people like us. Yes, yes. I don't <laughs> I think, mean, but some people think that that was the, the plan. I doubt was to that, try that and, was the plan. No, no. it that literally is. Yeah. I don't think this, this <laughs> tiny little subset of the market, we can get them to buy it twice. Yeah. Let's increase sales by like 200 guys yes I don't think that's how <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah, they're certainly so. not going to be convincing you know the pc people to buy a console to play this game first <laughs> mm-hmm. oh. but um thankfully from you guys' reports here and certainly from reports of uh, other people who are at the event the pc version is sounding pretty darn crispy which uh, makes me happy i want it i need it mm. mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah I, I think of it as a long-term thing like i know my aspirations are not competitive. I'm not going to be on Team Liquid yes, in same Crucible. Here. I want to be able to <laughs> team up with, you know, if Fallout and Mega will let me join, and we can carry people together to the lighthouse or something like that. That sounds awesome. Like, I want to be able to do that. 
But I do want to be on PC for the experience that I felt while I was playing that campaign. Mm -hmm. Playing the, the Crucible was definitely like, holy shit, this is beautiful. But it wasn't the thing that made me go like, I need this. But playing that story, being in that world, being in the, the tower as it crumbled in those, that dark tower north area and, and being on that ship and seeing the city below, like that experience made me want it. And I want to be able to raid with my scuff. Or whatever yeah. on, on the on the PC. That to me is more important than getting to be insane with mouse and keyboard, so that I can uh, play competitive sweats or something like mm -hmm. that on PC. I'll try to I'll try to be the biggest tryhard on PS4. Don't you worry. Yeah. Uh, I'll definitely try to be. <laughs> I'll try to get good there. But I'm not even worried about it on PC. I just want that experience, and that's just a choice that I can make. That no one, certainly no one, has to make mm -hmm. to enjoy this game. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant and enjoyable on on PS4. Lovely. Agreed. Well put. Someone else want to pick a question? Because there's plenty of them. The chat is live with... I saw one that <laughs> was a little salty, but uh, I guess it's worth answering. Was there hand cannon bloom? <laughs> it feels the same. I would, yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, felt uh, the same. Yeah. I was yeah. going to ask Fallout directly. Are they still <laughs> good? Are they still crispy? Are they? Please Come tell me so. They crispy. They were good, but I mean, like, it wasn't my favorite weapon type. Really? Really? What yeah. was you using? I was using the pulse rifle. Okay. And actually, a little bit of the auto, auto, auto used, rifle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Someone yeah. told me to give the auto a shot, yeah. and I was like, ooh, damn. What strange yeah. new <laughs> world is this? <laughs> I, I went around everywhere, especially before we played DCP. I was just like, auto. Auto's really good. Like, I just, like, leaned over people's <laughs> shoulders. Like, <laughs> I don't even, I don't even know a person. sliding people on note. <laughs> That just mm -hmm. says auto I just, rifle. I, I did. The, I popped like, or their headset off their head, and I was just like auto rifle, and then <laughs> threw it back on. And they were like, "What?" But they all switched and started winning. It was good. <laughs> and before you run around going, "Oh my God, it's an auto rifle meta!" Again, <laughs> these were just the guns that we were had like given. Ten weapons. Weapons. We yeah. had like the most yeah. basic of the basic bitch weapons. It was like basic auto rifle, basic pulse rifle. Yeah. So yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna I, be different depending on your weapon. I can't tell you exactly where I, where I, you'll find this, and I, I think I heard it secondhand, but I believe there's a perk on a yes. hand cannon that has to do with initial accuracy. It is. The, yeah, the, I ener saw that. the energy hand cannon had a perk that its first shot had increased accuracy on it. I, I actually found that out myself when I was playing because I, I fired and it kept making the luck in the chamber like ding, and I was like, what the hell is making it do that noise? <laughs> yeah. So I had to like dig into the perks and find what it was. But yeah, that is a thing. So I don't know if that means that the initial accuracy of hand cannons without that perk is lower than destiny one and this is raising it up or if this is raising it up even higher or not but that's something I, for somebody like fallout to figure out when the game's out not me i don't i don't think the feel was so different where they're just like oh my god they undid hand cannons but factor in the uh, setups the not max ranged hand cannons mm -hmm. with these perfect yeah. builds and low and you know rifled barrel and range finder uh, and then on top of that, a little longer time to kill. It's like you better hit your crit shots because you can't just do that one crit, two body to win. It won't. It just won't work like that. So I think mm -hmm. hand cannons will still be good. There's just they're just in a different environment now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I have a question I'd like to I'd like to answer mostly so I can tangent off of it, which is how do you guys feel about clan rewards, which I think is a great thing, you know, that you can earn rewards just from how your clan plays. But I really just want to tangent that's into how awesome I think the oh, new clan yes. system is in general. Oh, it looks good, the man. whole yeah. clan thing is so cool, like that they've implemented. <laughs> so, we didn't bring so, it up yet, and that's another cool thing that I just want to talk about. <laughs> so we're sitting there in the auditorium while they're giving the presentation about like, oh, it's you know, clans you can like kind of open your doors to random people like you know if you're doing an activity and your clan isn't all there you have room you can kind of put out the alert that you're looking and then someone who is looking to join an activity can kind of cycle through who's available and read the profile and be like oh they're doing like they're a pve clan and they all seem mm -hmm. nice uh, i'll take that or it's like a douchey pvp we teabag people clan it's like swipe Sweet that shit so and it, i thought it was the coolest shit it was so interesting and while i'm sitting there like wow what a brilliant idea how'd they come up with this <laughs> make it leans over and he as if he read my mind he's like it's fucking tinder it's tinder for destiny 2 <laughs> 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 just, like wow well, you know what left, you're right right <laughs> left Ooh, Ooh, that's a match <laughs> right there yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Super like. I think it's a really a really cool feature. Just for any activity you're doing, you'll be able to find people more easily, and maybe hopefully 
you can try to read the vibe of a clan going in and know if you're yeah. going to be getting like kind of not so fun people or if you're going to get the type of people you want to play with. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Definitely. And Two just, thumbs I mean, up for me. Having that option there for, for in-game content like Nightfalls and raid matchmaking and stuff like that. What a brilliant way to handle that. Mm -hmm. Rather than just having blind matchmaking, you can look for established groups that are looking to invite people in. I think that was yeah. a fantastic way but to handle the it. The best way around just, you know, this age-old conundrum of we want, you mm -hmm. know, blind matchmaking and stuff like that. So um, mm -hmm. a really good way around that that supports and enforces what Destiny actually really is. And, a, you know, it's a social experience and best enjoyed with people, yeah. with other people and stuff. So I was really happy to see that. GG as so, well, it, you know, guided, guided games. Guided games, yeah. 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 GG's. GG's. GG no re. GG no re. No rage <laughs> encounters. Yes. <Got> <laughs> um, Terrible. Question. Question. What else we got? Twitter, let's see. Uh, do you know if clans are still capped at 100 members? I have two versions of my clan and want less separation. Luke Smith basically said they're not going to do something that will alter your clan to transition over. They're going to maintain it in the state it's in now. So that's if you need to reorganize, that's that's like something you might want to do. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to feel like, well, I got this big clan and it's just going to get all messed up once we once we switch over. That's That's not supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. Pale Rider seven six six. I hope that helps. Alrighty. Uh, let's see. Bibletron's oh. asked if intellect, discipline, strength are removed. That's a quick one. That's it what seems I was to, to be. Yeah, yeah it seems strong. to be yes. We, yeah, there was no, there was no sign of it on anything we could see at least. Wasn't yep. it um, controlled cooldowns? Armor recovery. Uh, yeah, with agility. Those three stats. Agility. Your armor that's had it. your like what yeah. would normally be like your class stats. Your armor had. Mm -hmm. so was, the question that opens for me is: Can a warlock spec armor and agility and just abandon recovery? Is that kind of armor going to drop for a warlock? So, what separates classes besides their specific abilities, or will warlock armor? Just like tend to drop at like a certain level of agility on it. Yeah. yeah so you're not just going to mm -hmm. have the fastest warlock with high armor. Um, yeah. Uh, or or uh, are those just free for anyone to control? Which I also does seem appealing. It does. Here's a really yes. good one as well. Like, that, that's a good segue. With the Titan skating and Warlock surfing being changed, how did it feel? What was different with the the skating? That's from Red Cheat, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it felt really weird. It's the first <laughs> match I get into, I'm just like, mm -hmm. all right, let's do this. I'm on striker. I know how this plays. And I just, uh, I'm not moving. All of a sudden, I'm just walking through quick. I can't move. Trying to escape. Yeah. Yeah. You ever have that dream where you're being chased by a giant naked Mega Magwitch? You ever have that dream? And you're trying no. to run away. And it feels like you're running through, like, knee deep mashed potatoes it wasn't yeah. quite that bad but like i was trying to warlock surf and i was trying to titan skate i mean titan skating still works air quotations like mm -hmm. you can jump in the air wait till you're like this close to the ground and then just be like da, 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 and just pound that x button and uh, i was moving like a hair like i was i was trying so hard i was skating my brains out and like I look over my shoulder and Meg is like literally like three inches behind me like yeah, what's up dude like and he's just like running on foot and I'm like okay I guess this is kind of pointless <laughs> yeah I don't think I don't think that's a bad change at all I want to say that because the way the game has been tuned around having kind of slower movement it's just a really weird one to adjust to it's in a short amount of yeah. time because yeah. my instincts are so I'm so ingrained when I'm playing on a Titan that I need to like mm -hmm. skate to move around. When I'm on a Warlock, I need to constantly be trying mm -hmm. to surf my ass to the <laughs> other side of the map, and it just makes me look like an idiot in this game now. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> well, I got four minutes before I have to leave. So we should. So, so is that the cue to? I, I would say then? wrap things up. Yes. So um. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Outro <laughs> and stop. The worst, the Next, worst you do a story. Oh, no, no. Jesus. No. I'm not doing it. I don't do the you outros. Are. Oh, you want me to do, do it? it right now. Oh, wow. Well, yes. um, I think next week is going to be a very big podcast week for, yeah. for us because I think we're going to be taking on a lot of the, 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 the hopes, the aspirations, the fears, the worries about things moving forward in a very kind of civilized way 
uh, manner, you know. So uh, That's right. come and be a part of it next week. I know a lot of people have got some very kind of, um, you know, ambivalent, you know, kind of views and here and there. And um, I've, I've, I've seen, been part of it myself, you know, like some of the news that we've had is obviously sounds quite, kind of disappointing. Then there's the hype, you're extremely excited. There's a lot of emotions about the place. So tune in next week because we're gonna tackle those emotions for sure. And um, yeah, so that was podcast number 120. Uh, thank you very much for being a part of it. And um, yeah, next week, please show your faces. Uh, sorry we didn't get to answer all the questions, but there's going to be plenty more time for that next week. Yeah, Where can we will settle too. Yeah, yeah that's the thing. <laughs> I think that I've been watching a lot of people talk about these things and like literally it's so reassuring to see that there are so many balanced and well-educated, informed opinions out there. It's not just like a barrage of like lost. And then there's me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so yeah, there's the things that the, the future is incredibly bright folks, you know, it really is incredibly bright for the game. Um, and that, that's all I really wanted to say on that. So uh, how about finding everybody? Where can we find y'all? Uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash husky underscore raid. I stream every morning Destiny 1. It's not going to be as exciting as D2, but I also have a lot of... I got a lot of Union Alight codes from a little bit of a tipsy Cosmo, so anybody wants those. Oh, yeah, wow. You got, those. Oh, you got yeah. them, you got them Fallout, crispy ones. Where we find you, Fallout plays. Google Fallout plays. You'll find me. Trials, mm -hmm. carries, guides, shenanigans. Boom. Boom. Walks by the beach. Bones Tyler told me he hates Trials, carries a few weeks <laughs> months ago. I believe That's you. That's all he does. That's all he does. <laughs> Oh, so anyways, rah, 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 rah. where to find you, Bones? Rah, rah, rah. Uh, at Bones underscore CR on Twitter, or just check out Crucible Radio. And if you're listening to this live and you hear this, or if you're listening to it in recording, go back and check this out. But uh, tomorrow we're dropping episode 100 of Crucible Radio. <gasps> there has so much work has been poured into it. Uh, Birds has been editing literally since Friday night on this radio play we did. We put a little teaser on Twitter. Um, Mega Magwitch starring as Ridley in that one, so get ready for that. Um, it's gonna suck. My parts are gonna suck. <laughs> no, it's good. That sounds good. Um, but the rest of it's good. Just my lines. That's yeah. There's saying. there's more D two talk, and then there's a little like uh, some other little nostalgic segments. Anyways, mm -hmm. Fallout's giving me the wrap it up, you yeah. asshole. I only I only have one one hundredth episode. I promise. That's true. That's true. You gotta shill it right. The Black Link. Where can they find you? Okay. Yo, what up? Uh, you can find me generally everywhere on the internet at the Black Link, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, all of that. Uh, this week, I, the usual stuff. We've got Strim Strams going on. Going to be playing, you know, boring old worthless Destiny One, <laughs> and wishing we had <laughs> Destiny Two. But hey, <laughs> we can dream, right? And we can complain about things, and that's probably what's going to be happening all week long. Mm -hmm. But story. Get us on out of here, man. Yeah, man. Where can they find you? Well, you can find me at uh, Twitch TV slash, and the name's just below. I'm streaming a hell of a lot, and I'm still loving playing Destiny 1. We're going to be playing lots of yeah. PvP this week, so tune in and come and join me and say hello. We've been having loads of fun in sixes and stuff like that. So, yeah, and come play. Just come play, drop by, uh, and that's it. Ladies and gents, I'm going to have to go because my dog is destroying something next door and probably <laughs> being... Uh, she's old. She's so old. It's probably her last year mm. press f to play respects which is destroying books and probably pissing <laughs> on everything at the moment <sighs> anyway let's uh let's raid somebody say goodbye everyone thank you very much for being here uh, who's listening Thanks for listening and uh, we'll see you next week for a huge explosion of love and laughter yes <laughs>